the structure of the epithelial tissue. This is our study guide. And by the end of this class, we should be able to describe what the epithelium is, describe the cell to cell junction, and also state the general function that they present. What is a tissue? A tissue is a collection of cells. I hope we still remember our cell tissue organ system organization, where we say that two or more cells form tissue, two or more tissue comes together to form an organ and two or more organ form system. For two or more cells to come together to become a tissue, they must have comparable structure. They must also be able to carry out similar function. They must also have originated from the same embryonic layer which means that cells that come together to form a tissue must either have originated from the mesoderm, the ectoderm, or the mesoderm. Remember a lecture on the embryology where we discussed the three germ layers. So this means that cells from the ectoderm cannot come together with cells from the endoderm to form a tissue. They must have the same embryonic origin. Types of tissue that we have, the epithelial tissue, which is what we'll be discussing today, say that their collection of cells are found lining interiors of cavities or lining surfaces. We also have the connective tissue from the name connective, which means it connects other type of tissue together. We have the muscle tissue, which is a collection of cells, which cytoplasm is rich in fiber. We also have the nervous tissue, which is a collection of neurons and its supporting neuroglia. And the function that they perform basically is to receive impulses to interpret and analyze and also relay the outcome to the target organ for response to take place. You can go and check up our lecture on the nervous tissue. The epithelial tissue basically is defined as tightly packed cells that are found lining the interiors of cavities or lining surfaces. So this is what they present with. The morphology of the epithelium basically is seen to be presented with three surfaces, which include the apical surface, the lateral surface, and the basal surface. The apical surface is the topmost surface. It's also called the luminal surface or the free surface. It is free because it is not associated with other cells or other structure. The lateral surface is a surface onto which the epithelium link with the neighboring cell. So this is like a point of contact between the epithelial cells. And we have the basal surface, which is a surface through which it connects with the basement membrane. Looking at the lateral surface, the lateral surface presents a form of cell-to-cell -cell junction. The first one that we'll be looking at is the tight junction or occluding junction. It's also called the zonula occludens. Presents a closely associated link between the epithelial cells. And this tends to create a form of impermeable barrier so that there are regulated movement of molecules and ions across the epithelium lining. And where you see this kind of epithelium is in the stomach, the lungs, the kidney, and the urinary bladder, where there is need for a controlled movement of ions. The second transformation that we would discuss is the gap junction. From the name gap, it means there is a space between the epithelial cells. But this space is not just lying fallow, it is embedded by a gadget that is called the channel protein. This channel protein is responsible for the movement of ions or molecules from one cell to the other. So in this form of presentation, there's actually allowance for movement. And where you see this kind of presentation is in the cardiac tissue, where there is need for ionic and signal transfer from one cell to the other. The third form of transformation that we could see in the cell-to-cell -cell junction is the desmosome. Let's say this is a cell of the lining epithelium. This is another cell of the lining epithelium. And this is the lateral surface of one. This is the lateral surface of the other. We have intermediate filaments within the cytoplasm that are structurally connected to the intermediate filament of the neighboring cell through this linkage. So this basically does not allow a form of movement between one cell to the other, but what it does mostly is to create an adensive support for the epithelium. We also have the hemidesmosome. Hemidesmosome is not related to cell-to-cell -cell junction, 
But where you see a midest bosom is on the basal surface, where it links the basal surface of the epithelium with the basement membrane. So they do not just lie onto the basement membrane, but are connected with a small complex that tends to, to support the connection between the epithelium and the basement membrane. Functions of the lateral surface or the cell to the cell junction could now be attributed to the kind of transformation that is seen between the cell to cell junction. You could say that it controls the movement of ions along the epithelium line, and that is when a tight junction is presented, whereby there is regulated movement. Or you could say that it allows movement of molecules or ion, and that is where we have the presentation of gap junction. And this is done through the channel protein that embedded between the space that is located between the epithelium. Or we could say that it creates a form of structural support or tensile strength for the lining epithelial cells. And that is when we have the presentation of the desmosome, which is not involved in transportation of molecules or ions. But what it does more is to give strength. The apical surface is also referred to as the free surface or the luminal surface because it's the surface that is related to the lumen or is free because it's not connected to other epithelium. It actually forms an interface between the extracellular space and also the intracellular compartment. The apical surface basically are seen in a straight pattern fashion, but they could be transformed into different kinds of specification depending on the kind of function that they are programmed to exhibit. So we'll be looking at the different transformation that could occur on the apical surface. The first one that I would like to talk about is the microvilli. The apical surface could be thrown into infoldings instead of being spread patterned. And this is seen in majorly organs that are responsible for absorption. So this infoldings tends to increase surface area for the process of absorption to take place. If you cut out this region and cut out another region that is straight back and you see that the length of this is small, so that absorption rate is increased in apical surface that are thrown into infoldings that just a plain patterned apical surface. And that is why you see these infoldings so as to increase the surface area for absorption. It could also be seen with a light projection they are longer and narrower than the microvilli. What this does basically is to enhance transportation along the lumen of the structures that they are lining. Mm -hmm. This cilia tends to flip backward and forward. When they flip backward and forward, they tend to generate a form of impulse that pushes structures that are found within the lumen downwards. So as they move, they tend to push structures because of the pressure that is generated by the flipping action of the cilia. So they tend to push the structure downwards. You could also see a flagella presentation. This is a long projection that is seen in the apical surface. But this basically is programmed for movement. As they flip, they tend to swim fast. Other tests have also said that these flagella are sensitive to change in the microenvironment. So they are sensitive to change in temperature or pressure, but their basic function that they are designed for is for movement. So the function of the apical surface also could be attributed to the transformation that is seen on the apical surface. We could say that the apical surface perform the function of absorption. And that is when the apical surface is thrown into infoldings. You could say that they perform the function of transportation. And that is when you see the presentation of cilia. Or you could say that they allow movement. That is when you see the presentation of the flagella. The basement membrane is like a strong platform onto which the epithelium are lined upon. So the epithelium are not just lining interiors of cavities, but they are first lined onto the basement membrane before they form this alignment. So the basement membrane is like a structural support onto which they are lined upon. And they are basically made up of three distinct layers, which are the lamina lucida, the lamina densa, and also the reticular lamina. These three layers form the structural component of the basement membrane.
The function of the basement membrane, apart from giving structural support from the lining epithelial cell, they also serve as an orientation platform onto which the epithelium are lined upon. We can imagine the epithelium lining without a basement membrane. The configuration or the alignment will not be smooth and perfect, but this has been able to come to play because of the basement membrane that has given them the perfect orientation onto which they can line upon. So they are well arranged. They also form the basis onto which new cells are formed. For example, during healing process, and let's say this layer of epithelium are eroded, new cells are needed to be formed. So they create a platform down for new cells to be formed. Also, the basement membrane gives a mechanical barrier, thereby preventing the invasion of microorganisms or unwanted substances. So as soon as they invade the epithelium, the basement membrane creates like a barrier stopping the invasion of those microorganisms to go down, to go deep down into the connective tissue. Because we actually have a connective tissue down here. So even if they're able to penetrate the epithelium, they would not be able to penetrate the basement membrane. General function of the epithelium could be one, they have a protective function. And this is mostly justified by the fact that they can be seen in a form of stratification, which means they can be seen in layers. So that when the upper layer is eroded or destroyed, they re-proliferate to replace the worn out area. And they are constantly being able to renew themselves. This is one attribute that they have to be able to do this. It is also seen that the higher the number of layers that the epithelium presents, that the higher the protective power that they will be able to give. The second function is absorption. Remember when we talked about the infolding that is seen on the apical surface, and we attributed this to the fact that it's able to increase the surface area for absorption. So epithelium that would be presenting the function of absorption must have their apical surface thrown into infoldings. And when you have this kind of presentation is in the small intestine, where absorption of food takes place. Also secretion, epithelium can present the function of secretion. And the kind of epithelium, when you view them under the microscope, you see that their cytoplasm is very active. The Goga apparatus and other cell organelles that are responsible for secretion are active within the cytoplasm of those cells. So you see a lot of secretory vacuoles within the cytoplasm of an epithelium that is presented with the function of secretion. Also sensation, these are very specific, depending on the organs where they are lining, maybe in the eyes, the ears, the nose, or the tongue. So they are specifically designed for the sense organs that they are lining. So they can also perform the function of sensation. They can sense impulses from the external or the internal environment as the case may be. Also contraction, they're able to contract. And epithelium that is seen with this kind of features, you see that their cytoplasm is rich in actin and myosin fibers, which allows them to be able to contract and relax. And where you see this kind of epithelium mostly is in glands and in muscle. Thank you for your time. Let's continue to learn anatomy through this channel.